Hello, you just became to watch a video about the IS28 investments in associates and joint ventures. That is a part of our little group accounts and consolidation series. Well, you can find the other videos with other standards and examples for free in this YouTube channel. So check them out if you need. I am Sylvia, the founder of IFRS Box, the website to visit if you want to learn IFRS stress-free and like a pro. So don't forget to check ifrsbox.com and browse my articles, videos, courses, quizzes, and many more. Well, we have already seen this screen in one of our earlier videos with the introduction to group accounts in this channel. Well, here's the summary of all kinds of investments that an investor can make. Investor can put her money into a subsidiary. If she gains a control, which is evidenced by more than 50% share in most cases, but not necessarily, an investor applies full consolidation method. Then an investor may invest in an associate where the significant influence is present or in some joint arrangement, which is a joint venture or joint operation. And here the basic criteria is joint control or investor can invest money in any kind of other investment. And then it is just a financial instrument. Now, in this video, we'll focus on investments in associates arranged by the standard IS-28. The investments in subsidiaries are arranged by IFRS 3 and IFRS 10. These are covered by other videos and joint arrangements are covered by IFRS 11. So let's focus on IS-28 investments in associates and joint ventures. The main objective of IS-28 is to prescribe the accounting for associates and we already know what an associate is. It's an investment over which an entity has significant influence and to set out the requirements for the application of equity method when accounting for investments in associates in joint ventures. Well, wait a minute. I've just said a minute ago that joint ventures are dealt with in IFRS 11. Yes, that's true. IFRS 11 defines joint arrangements, including joint ventures, and says that you should apply equity method for joint ventures. But here in IS 28, the same equity method is described for both associates and joint ventures. So that's just to clarify a bit. Okay, so the associate is an investment over which an entity has significant influence. But what precisely is significant influence? It is a power to participate, while well, not direct or control, just participate in the financial and operating policy decisions of the investee, but it's not a control or joint control of these policies. So if you'd like to learn more about the control then my video with the intro to group accounts and summary of IFRS 10 wait for you here in this channel. The main indicator of significant influence is the holding either directly or indirectly of more than 20% but less than 50 of the voting power over the investee. But be careful because that's not determinative or decisive factor. In fact, there are many cases when investor held, let's say, 30% of voting power, but in fact exercised control or did not exercise anything at all. So there are more things to consider before we can make a conclusion about the existence of significant influence. So what is the evidence of significant influence? There's more things to watch out. For example, an investor has its representation in board of directors or any similar managing body. Or investor participates in policy making processes, including participations on decisions about dividends. Or there is some interchange of managerial personnel between the investor and investment or investee. Or there could be some material transaction between these two or a provision of some significant technical information, just to name a few of ways how significant influence can be evidenced. Except for defining significant influence, IS-28 requires an entity with the joint control that is defined in IFRS 11 or significant influence in an investee shall account for its investment in an associate or joint venture using the equity method. We will take a closer look to equity method in a few seconds, but just let me add there 
that there are few exemptions. So when the entity does not need to apply equity method, even when other conditions are met, it's when all of the following is true. Number one, the entity is a wholly owned subsidiary or is a partially owned subsidiary of another entity and its other owners, well, all owners have been informed about and do not object to the entity not applying the equity method. Number two, the entity's debt or equity instruments are not traded in a public market, either stock exchange or some over-the-counter market. Number three, the entity did not file nor is in the process of filing its financial statements with the Securities Commission or other regulatory organization for the purpose of issuing any class of instruments in a public market. And number four, the ultimate or any intermediate parent of the entity produces consolidated financial statements available for public use that comply with IFRSs. So when all four conditions are met, then an entity does not need to apply equity method. Plus, when an entity is apparent exempt from preparing consolidated financial statements under IFRS 10. Then there are some specifics related to ownerships by venture capital organizations, mutual funds, unit trusts and similar entities. If this is the case, then these entities can present their investments in associates and joint ventures at fair value through profit or loss under IFRS 9 rather than under this standard. Also, when an entity classified its investment in an associate or joint venture or a portion of it as held for sale, then of course standard IFRS 5 is applied for the accounting for this associate, so no equity method. Now, let's take a look at what the equity method is all about. The basic principle is that at the acquisition date or on initial recognition, investor needs to recognize its investment in an associate or joint venture at cost. So the journal entry would be to debit the investment in associate in the statement of financial position well, or joint venture and credit cash, bank accounts, some liability, whatever applies for this specific situation. After the acquisition date, so at the end of each reporting period, for example, investor increases or decreases the carrying amount of its investment by its share of the associate's profit or loss after the acquisition. So the entry is something like debit investment in an associate in the statement of financial position and credit profit from associate in profit or loss. Of course, when associate makes a loss, then the investor debits P&L with loss and credits the investment in the statement of financial position. When there are some distribution from an associate or joint venture to investor like dividends, then the investor basically reduces carrying amount of its investment by the amount received and the journal entry is to debit cash or bank account or whatever applies here and credit investment in an associate. So here you can see that equity method really requires you to show your actual share on investees profit or losses, not only the share you get in form of dividends. Well, why are these dividends credited to investments and not in profit or loss? Well, that would be double counting because you have already credited profit or loss with the dividends when you recognize investors share in associates profit and dividend is a part of that profit. Let me briefly sum up other important procedures when applying equity method. Well, many procedures in equity method are very similar to consolidation procedures described in IFRS 10, for example, both investor and associate have to use the same or uniform accounting policies for similar transactions. And if they are not the same, then some adjustments might be necessary. Also, they should use the same reporting date. Very similar rules apply to mutual transactions, but here you don't eliminate mutual balances like receivables and payables. Instead, you should focus only on the gain or loss on mutual transactions and eliminate investors' share on it only. Well, I'd like to mention one more important rule. 
When your associate is loss-making, you should never reduce the carrying amount of your investment below zero, while you simply stop bringing in the further losses. Well, finally, let me add when you should stop or discontinue applying the equity method. Well, it's when your significant influence ceases to exist, whatever reason there might be. So, for example, when investor acquires some additional share and significant influence upgrades to control, then investor stops equity method and starts full consolidation. So this was the short summary of the standard IS-28, Investments in Associates and Joint Ventures. Well, if you need or want to improve your IFRS skills, then you're very welcome to check out my IFRS kit or subscribe for free weekly newsletter at ifrsbox.com. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.